So there you are, ready to manifest your dreams. And you're in a relationship, but your significant other is not playing ball. They don't seem to be as committed to this manifesting process as you would like them to be, or they're doing something else that seems to be interfering with your manifestation. And you're finding yourself getting a little bit resentful because you think they might be slowing down your manifestation and you're receiving what it is that you want. If this sounds familiar, then stay tuned to today's video and find out what you can do about it. Hey, my happy shiny puppies in training. This is Melody Fletcher, author of Deliberate Receiving. Finally, the universe makes some freaking sense. Home of all things law of attraction, reality creation, and going on down the rabbit hole. And today's law of attraction question comes to us from awesome Cherie who wants to know, what about when it comes to my husband and I? We have so many plans, but he won't jump in and help. And I feel like I'm doing it all by myself. I find myself saying, if he doesn't want to, I'm not going to either, which I think may be slowing down creation a bit. What should I do? Well, awesome Cherie, thank you so much for asking this question because I think it's something that so many of us struggle with. Most of us find it easier when we're by ourselves to hold the vibration of something that we want, to stay in a good feeling place, to notice how we're feeling, to allow the negative emotions, to do the work, and then to step into the belief that what we want is actually on its way. But enter another human being, another person, or even just the television, and we might find it a little bit more complicated. So what happens is that you might be feeling really, really good all day and your significant other comes home and is just bitching and moaning and complaining about the horrible day they've had and you're finding it really difficult to stay in your happy, shiny place and you find yourself getting very resentful because they're kind of harsh in your buzz, so to speak. They're bringing you down. Or you might have some common goals, something that you're working on manifesting together, maybe a new house or vacation or something, and they don't seem to be pulling their weight. And now that causes you to doubt that you're going to get what you want because they're not pulling their weight and this is a co-creation, it's a joint creation, a joint manifestation, and you're finding yourself getting resentful. In either case, the cause is exactly the same. It's a lack of vibrational stability. Now what is vibrational stability? Vibrational stability is your ability to hold the vibration of your choosing no matter what environmental or external factors may be present. So when somebody more negative comes into your reality and they start pulling you down or they don't seem to be pulling their weight and you are doubting the fact that you're going to get what you want, in both of those cases you're allowing somebody else to affect your vibration, which doesn't feel so good, so now you've got some negative emotion going on, and now you're blaming them for the fact that you don't feel good rather than taking responsibility for your own vibration. This is vibrational instability, and it happens to everybody. So before we get into how to increase your vibrational stability, I want to make one thing really, really, really clear, and that is do not ever beat up on yourself for your lack of stability. Do not ever judge yourself for it. It does not mean that you're doing something wrong and it doesn't mean that you've somehow backslid into a former vibration, which you can't do anyway, by the way. But it doesn't mean that you sort of backtracked um, or that you're not making the progress that you thought you were making. In many cases, it's actually the opposite. So let me give you an analogy to help make my point. Let's say that you want to learn how to surf. So when you're first learning how to surf, the instructor will put you on a board whilst you're still on the beach. So the board is laying on the sand and you're on that board and you're just going to practice getting up, sort of from a lying down position, standing up on that board. And it's going to take you a few tries to get that. You're going to be a bit wobbly. You're going to maybe even fall off the board even though it's on the beach. You're going to lose your balance. But after a few times, after some practice or maybe a few weeks, <laughs> depending on how uh, uh, challenged you are in the balance department, I'm very challenged in the balance department, um, you're going to eventually be able to get up on that board every time you're going to stand up, you're going to stand up, you're going to stand up, you're going to feel comfortable doing that. And then the instructor is going to take you into the ocean and they're going to have you do this on the water. 
And so they're going to up the challenge. They're going to up the difficulty level, right? And of course, the first few times, even though on the beach you were able to do it, you were able to do it, you were able to do it, the first time you do it in the water, in you go. You're going to fall right off that board. Second time, probably fall right off that board. Third time, depending again on how challenged you are in the balance department, you're going to start to be able to get up. So at some point, you're going to be able to get up. And so the instructor's going to have you, you know, surf some smaller waves. You're going to paddle out, catch a few smaller waves, bigger waves come and skip that one, little smaller wave, try this one, try this one, try this one. And you're going to get better and better and better as time goes on. So when you've mastered one level of wave, you're going to get bored unless you level up to the next wave, right? You're going to want to go up to a bigger wave. But every time you level up to a bigger wave, you're probably going to have a few times that you're going to fall off that board. You're not going to be an expert at it right away. You're going to be a little bit shaky or you're going to be a little bit unstable. I hope you're starting to see where this goes. So every time you level up in your vibration, you're going, every time you step into a new territory outside your comfort zone, you're going to hit a period of vibrational instability. That means that other people are going to have seemingly the power, they don't really, but seemingly the power to kind of get to you. Stuff's going to bother you a little bit more. You're not going to be able to hold your Zen as easily. This is a temporary period every time you level up. So please don't judge yourself if you hit a period like this. It is for your own good. It's you stabilizing at this new level so that that becomes comfortable. And then, then when that gets kind of boring, you'll level up again. It's human nature. It's what we do. So there you are, and you've caught yourself in a moment of vibrational instability. First of all, again, don't judge yourself. Second of all, treat it like any other manifestation any other manifestation of resistance, because that's exactly what it is. You see, your husband can't cooperate with you if your vibration won't allow it. So what is he showing you in that moment? Well, what he's showing you in that moment of uncooperativeness, yeah, is that you're not fully aligned with your manifestation. You haven't completely done the work. Perhaps you're going for a bigger manifestation than you've gone before. You've stepped outside your comfort zone and something that you were quite comfortable doing before now is a little bit wobbly again. That's okay. It's for you to figure out why it's bothering you. So, for example, what I'm feeling in your question is that you guys have become, or you have become, too action-oriented. So you're trying to take action when it's not yet time to take action. He's not playing along, and now you're thinking, you guys aren't going to make it happen, and you're resenting him for that. When what has gone wrong is that you aren't waiting for the action to be inspired, and you're sort of rushing the process, and you're not fully aligned, and... All that is is a lack of trust that what you want is actually going to come. That's what it always is when you're trying to make something happen. Or the other example I used of being in a high vibration all day and then somebody else comes in and sort of harshes your buzz, takes you down a notch. Um, what that's showing you, again, is that you're not vibrationally stable. You want to take a look at what it was that they said, why it bothered you, go past the resentment and take a look at what it is that you're actually feeling. And in general terms, you're always going to get down to a lack of trust that, that what you want is going to come in. And that is what you want to work on. Because remember, nobody else can manifest in your reality, not in a good way, not in a bad way, unless you decide that they can. So if you have decided that somebody else's uncooperativeness or their negativity has the ability to mess with your manifestations, well, then they do. But if you haven't decided that, then they can't. So this is what I mean when I say take your power back. You want to take your power back. That means stop giving other people the power to manifest in your reality. Take responsibility for your own vibration. Take a look at what it is that's going on with you, how you are feeling, what's really bothering you, and how you are not in full integrity, in full belief that you are going to get everything that you want. And it really doesn't matter what anybody else is doing or not doing in your reality. They don't have the power to mess with your manifestations unless you give it to them. 
So I hope I've answered your question to your satisfaction, Awesome Cherie. If you'd like to ask your own question or you'd like to join the conversation, then please do so below in the comments in YouTube or on my blog at deliberateceiving.com where the Happy Shiny Puppy Army, a tribe of powerful like-minded creators cannot wait to meet you. And I look forward to reading what you guys have to say. I do read every single comment and I do my best to reply as often as I can. For this week, thank you for bringing your light to the world. This has been Melody Fletcher, author of Deliberate Receiving, Finally the Universe Makes a Freaking Sense, and I will see you next week.